course. And the freedom to practice those things is important, right? Yeah, like everything definitely. You, every, yeah, everything yeah. you're talking about uh, is you cannot, you cannot use force. You cannot yeah, use definitely. violence. Yes. You cannot have a particular group of people say that we have the utopian idea and the way we're going to bring it about is we're going to use guns and we're going to use laws or we're going to use regulatory authority and we're going to force it to happen. That you, it, it can't work. And it, it, it goes back to even what I was saying a little bit before about you know, our research where the, the most prosperous countries in the world over time are those with high amounts of political freedom and economic freedom. Uh, why do nations fail? Because they have governments that have extractive institutions that take from the people because the government wants to use that power to try and forcibly create their society. Uh, and uh, you know, where you have freedom of religion, freedom of yes. economy, and freedom of, of political structures, that's where you have prosperous, safe um, people. You are definitely yeah. right. Freedom is very um, important. Otherwise, oppressing people generates hypocrisy. They have an enmity and hatred, but you, uh, whatever you, what kind of ideology you impose against. So uh, freedom of thought, freedom of worship is actually in the essence of Quran also. I will give you the example, the uh, evidence for that. In one verse, Allah says, I seek refuge in Allah from a curse Satan. There is no compulsion in religion. So you cannot force anybody to believe in anything. What they do, people do in Iran, for example, in other countries is against religion actually. They oppress the people and that generates hypocrisy and that generates enmity and hatred and reaction against religion actually. That's very risky. Jerry, you, you wanted to say something? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to give uh, a little bit of history while we're on the subject. Uh, uh, because in 1099, which was four centuries after the conquest of Jerusalem by Muslims, uh, Crusaders invaded Jerusalem and put all Muslim inhabitants to the sword at that time. Uh, and again, contrary to the fears of Christians, Saladin and Mus uh, the Muslim general who captured Jerusalem and saved the city from invasion in 1187, uh, didn't harm one single civilian and didn't allow a soldier to, to get killed. Moreover, he also allowed them to, uh, the invading Christians, to take all their possessions and leave the city uh, at, while they were at war. Uh, so the, the periods um, of, uh, of Sejuk Turks and the Ottoman Empire uh, were marked by tolerance and justice of Islam as, uh, as known Jews who were expelled from Catholic Spain uh, found the peace that they sought in the lands of Ottoman Empire when they took refuge in 1492, uh, Sultan Mehmed, uh, the conqueror of Istanbul, also allowed Jews and Christians religious freedoms regarding the tolerant and just practices of Muslims. Historian uh, Michael, uh, A. Michael Mikhail uh, stated, and uh, I want to quote this, that the Christians were, you, were ruled by a very well-administered state, which was something that did not exist in the Byzantium or Latin sovereignty. They were never subjected to Semitized oppression. On the contrary, the empire and foremost Istanbul became a refuge for much of the tortured Spanish Jews. They were never forced to accept Islam. And uh, this is from the history of the Ottoman state, Istanbul, 1994. Um, and then John L. Espedito, uh, professor of religion and international politics at Georgetown University, uh, a few years later in 92 said for many non-Muslim populations in Byzantine and Persian territories already subjugated to foreign rules, Islamic rule meant a change of rulers and the new ones often more flexible and tolerant rather than loss of independence. Many of these populations now enjoyed greater local autonomy and often paid lower taxes. So religiously, Islam proved a more tolerant religion providing greater religious freedoms for Jews and indigenous Christians. And that's uh, John L. Esposito, The Islamic Threat, uh, Myth of Reality from Oxford Press, uh, 1992. So there's, there's, there are a lot of, of instances of history that can be studied that people do not look at. They want to look at what they see on the news or what they see in newspapers, and they think, well, now I'm an expert. I read this, I read this article, so now I know it all, and now I have my opinion. And there is um, what has been portrayed to people, I think, especially for the last 10 or 15 years, is an atrocity compared to the knowledge and the science and the education that is behind not only Islam but the rest of the faiths.